I'm very pleased that you're here, and um, we are going to we are going to see a little bit about my work, mostly because I wanted to show you how I use the rubbings, and we're then going to go and play ourselves with them, which I'm frankly looking forward to very much. Um, rubbings is a, a really wonderful technique, and it's something that has been around for ages, and um, it's been really exploited in the last hundred years by artists. I was actually trying to find some more people that did stuff with rubbings before, and the first person that really came up that was, did substantial work with it was Max Ernst, and he's an early 20th century artist, but we'll get into him later. In the meantime, um, I thought this was a fascinating technique, and it was explained to me as a very young child when my parent, I'm not sure it was Dick or Ellen, Ellen and Dick, my parents, um, dragged out a coin from their pocket and put this coin on the table, put a little piece of paper over it, and took a pencil on the side and just rubbed it. And the coin was underneath. It's like, oh, there's, there's Abraham Lincoln. Wow, there's the eagle. Wow. Anyway, the whole idea that you could get an image so quickly, so immediate, was just something that was delightful. And I know probably people have been doing this for ages with coins, but as I said, no artist will let um, a stone or coin go unturned and more things got developed. Anyway, so I'm gonna do is show you a little bit about my art and how I used rubbings in it. Um, and as I said, and then we're gonna go play ourselves because that's gonna be the fun part. Um, one other thing I will say about rubbings, it really has to do a lot to do with multiple images, which means that there's a really big connection between printing and also rubbings. And so um, a lot of things I have that are prints actually are things that I could use for rubbings when you don't have all the supplies. So on we go, if I can get the right direction. This is not a rubbing. This is me as a very young child drawing. I was fascinated with art, loved it. My, both my parents were doing it all the time, so of course, guess what? I do it. So this is a very early drawing. Um, this probably was in under 10, something like that, yeah. I did, oh, I did endless little ladies like this. Um, this also was something that we did as a family. Um, these are actually, um, this is a photograph of them, but these were actually exquisite corpses that my father and I did together. Now, the reason I bring this up is that um, my father, do you know what the game exquisite corpse is? Here, this is exquisite corpse, it's a Dada's game. You start out with drawing a face, then you fold the paper over, and then you just leave two little lines of the neck, and you give it to the next person. They don't know what you've done, you do the body. Then you fold that over, you leave the two little lines for the legs, and you give it to the next person. All right, and then you open it up, surprise. So these would, going back, these were the ones that my father and I did. See, he did a horse, and then um, he gave me these lines, and I just didn't take it into, I made a whole little person which then I gave him little lines here, and then he made it in the hair, <laughs> which then he gave it back to me with all this, and then I made it into a dress of hair. Do you understand? They don't have to be, they're really zeros. Anyway, they were fun. Um, so exquisite corpse. Um, and then I love playing with images. This is not mine. This is Max, Max Klinger. He was a artist in the early 20th century. I always loved this line drawings because we liked line things. This was actually a print, but I love the line in it. So I did a whole series with this using that multiple image. This is this multiple image idea. And this was all had to do with um, hearts and this little lady and all the things that she did. And I think I did once a week, one, one a week for about a year. So there were all these variations. And they all have the little lady somewhere in it and variations. So <laughs> they're sort of fun. But this is to do with this multiple use of things. Now, this is a drawing, I really love drawing too, but um, it's the whole thing about using your hands and just always sort of a little bit of chance when you use your hands and doing art. So that's the little bit of chance. Um, this is a print, and this was nothing I ever showed in the show, but I always loved this. This was the ink being rolled out, okay? Then this was the hand being put into the ink. That was the hand print. Then I went back here, and this is all done with just my hand. You understand? finger, whatever. So these were hand prints. So this is hand play. Um, these little dancers, those are all just hands. And there's a whole sort of sequence. But there's this thing about multiple images, what you can do with things, and how you can make um, 
images. So this was a whole bunch of plates and prints. And then many of these things I now use for rubbing plates because I don't have prints. By the way, the rooster we have is something we can use. All right, so now back to sort of other things. Um, there's themes that artists have. And you know, the anti-war, the um, anti-violence is something that always has been strong with me. Um, this was from the Gulf War when the oil rigs got let up and then there was an awful lot of casualties in the yellow ribbons. Um, this is theater of war. This gets into multiples with computer images, rubbings, um, in bas relief, uh, I see, no, embossing. It was embossing printing. See, that's that multiple image things. Um, this was um, a little detail from that other one. So there was collage, there was multiple images, there was some rubbings, I mean, it was a whole bunch of things. Um, this was a, another anti-war across the tables with you know, anti-gun things. Um, series of things with, um, this isn't the war theme, this was just um, traveling, passage, which way you go. But this was all rubbings. These were definitely rubbings plus paint. And this was like where you are going in the world and where you travel. These are what different things. These oh, these ones, um, these were about this big. These were larger. Um, the other ones were really small, but this, these were larger. And, and that's rubbing there? Yeah, these were all rubbings. Uh, then there was some collage, little things. So, but the thing about rubbings is that you're, they're very immediate. Um, I keep meaning to get back into color, but I keep getting drawn to the black and white. But this was a little series of 3D collage things. And so some rubbing, some origami, some whatever. This was Adam and Eve. This was Adam and Eve rising up. And this was Adam and Eve in the, some kind of weird place. I don't know. Um, <laughs> another <laughs> variation, uh, just a detail, so you sort of see it a little better. Um, and then this was actually, these are life-size puppets. Um, Adam and Eve was a, a subject matter both my parents really enjoyed. Mom did a whole series of um, uh, a, sort of a collaborative piece with lots of people doing uh, Adam and Eve. My father did a really lovely drawing of Adam and Eve when he was um, uh, much earlier in his career. It was a line drawing, and then I took his line drawing and I made it into these life-size figures. These were cut out of, um, laser cut out of uh, wood like mom has with the, um, the picnic, the birthday, and the bridges. Actually, it was very interesting. The reason that we got into that whole thing was my brother-in-law, my husband's brother, Lori, of um, prototype designs, had just gotten lasers in his manufacturing business. And he was still learning how to do it. So he asked mom and me to give him images, because what am I supposed to cut out? I don't know. I'm learning this. So we got a chance to try out all these wonderful <laughs> images. And we, you know, we'd give it to him. He'd cut these things out. And then we'd get to paint them and do whatever we wanted with them. But it was really fun. So dear Lori. Anyway, those were Adam and Eve. And then you know, your themes do take over your life. I threw this in. Um, I was really working with it. And I was also eating apples. And so. Um, <laughs> I thought, gee, didn't that look like the snake's head? And then you have this little skin. And then, you know, here's one Adam and here's Eve and, you know, little portrait thing. You know, art doesn't always have to be on the wall. It can be in your life. And then they should have played with the apple beneath it? Yes, <laughs> exactly. I did finish off the apple after I photographed it. Um, all right, this was um, another piece that had to do with rubbings, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, and this was... Oh, can't think of her name, first name. Brooke Cannon, um, it's an artist. Can't think of her name. She did wonderful shacks, and they were doing a tribute to her. And so um, people were doing artwork in lieu of her work. So this was, you know, la ground, and then there's a little shack here, and then these are clouds were all in the shape of the shacks. Well, the reason this is interesting is I got fascinated in, is that I made these wonderful little plates out of um, cardboard, which then with my rubbing plates. And if you rub them and you cut them a proper way, you could make the little house on it. And um, which was sort of, they were, they were really pretty. And um, I made a little circle one too. So just subway away from this, I also like fibers a lot. And I love the crochet. And um, these were some crochet sculptures I did. I also really got fascinated in the tools you use to make fibers. So these are pincushion necklaces. You, hook them around your neck, and then you have your pincushion right here. 
And if any of you have ever sewn before, you know, you're working on your sewing here and you're looking for the pin cushion. It's under the fabric. I don't know where it is. And if it's on your wrist, which is also a nice place, it still gets tied up with things. But if you have your pin cushion here, then it's really handy and you can just put your pins into it. So they were necklaces. Um, this was another little subway thing, uh, another area I got into, um, was using uh, the fibers. This is a little world. And I had this whole little world of series. And these were about this big. Um, and they were paper mache. And they um, had little houses on them. And they were just, they were really fun to make and so on. And they, um, this whole little world does segue into the garden. Um, one of my biggest art projects that I have, I'm just touching on this, is my garden, which is here. Um, this is my house. And this is my garden, which goes out here. And this is my folly, folly one. We actually have two. There's lots of ponds. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's a whole bunch of ponds. I got into ponds too. Um, anyway, and then this, talk about doing you know, images and getting big, and you'll see why. This is the front of the house. This was a labyrinth. That's a pond. Anyway, this is front face. So if you go and look at my address on Google, guess what you see? You can see a face, which is fun. All right, that's folly one which was the first folly. And it's 18 feet high, so you can look up, look down on things. I did this just when Google came out with maps. It was sort of like, great, we can just get it up in the air. We don't need to. But it's still wonderful to climb up there on a beautiful starry night. And this is the rest of the yard, and that's folly two. <laughs> and that's the veggie prison. <laughs> I say veggie prison. This is because I, have living, I live next to a park, and so I have deer, rabbits, <laughs> raccoons, and everything. So anyway, and there's ponds and so on. So, and then um, this, this was a whole complex of ponds. This is like five of them that goes down, sort of phase down, but they're really pretty. And this is the veggie prison. This was our newest addition, was this wall and stairs. What was there before, I wouldn't go down in winter because I was too scared to go down the stairs because the, the stairs were like slipping. So we got this put in. Oh, by the way, this is not permanent. This is a temporary thing. So, and that's um, an aerial view, so you can see the front face, and that's the yard. Okay, well, anyway, that's another art project. But part of that, see, in the middle of the library right here is a flagpole, and I made flags. And so these are different flags. They have all sorts of, uh, this has had to do with the housing, um, the, um, the houses, um, housing bubble we had. And so here's a house with underwater. Here's where the market's going down. And this was danger and caution. And then this is actually a representation of one of my father's paintings of this little girl that was hiding underneath a table with very great anxiety. So I thought that was appropriate for the piece. Do you change them sometimes? Oh, all the time. Except right now my, my rope is broke. That's another thing to figure out, how to get the rope back up. All right, and then this is um, a wonderful saying. This is, um, I can't pronounce the, the uh, Latin, but it is, you know, life, um, art is long and life is short, basically. Um, and that's it flying. Because the flying is the fun part. This was a whole series on stripes, and I did a whole bunch of these, which gets down to the University of Michigan. Um, the University of Michigan used to have an alumna show every summer, and they used the Susser Gallery at the art school in, at North Campus. And it was a very tall place. And in the last decade, I got really excited about using the space. Like, I'm in this cramped little house, so now. So I had done about 40 flags. <laughs> and so <laughs> the only place I really could put them was up here. And I always thought they looked great, but I always said, nobody ever saw them because <laughs> they didn't know how to look up. <laughs> but they were wonderful. They were all streaming along. No, just sewn, sewn, just sewn on it. But they were w really wonderful in, um, you know, collection. Um, then the next year, I did another um, piece that also used the space. This is the Slusser floor, and that's the ceiling. And this was, I think, the one that was about um, so, so about the size, something about um, size, matters. size matters. Anyway, so I got excited. About, I, well, there's another thing I'll show you. I got very interested in uh, Dush, um, Durer's Triumphal Arch, his print. Did you ever see that? It's, it's, I've never seen the, per, the real one. But Durer did a print of a Triumphal Arch. A print. Not the physical stone one, but a print. 
And he did it quite large. I mean, it's as high as the ceiling, uh, probably. And so I got into it. So this is actually the size, the real size of it. But I took slivers. I took the vertical and horizontal. So this is as wide as it was, and that's as high as it was, as much as I could approximate it. And so that you had it. So this is actually the raft of the Medusa. I don't know if you know that piece. Uh, this is the Grand Yacht Surratt's thing. It's in Chicago. Um, this is Duchamp's um, Garden of Earthly Delights, this little one here. And then um, that's Venus on a half shell. Remember Botticelli with the, the, the Venus that's in the shell. I can't think of it. Oh, and then to, I don't know why I stuck it in, but I did. And that's new descending the staircase. But the whole idea was to do these slivers of the painting so that you would see the size of these things. And then the question was, how could you find the most representational, representational sliver that would be able to tell you what the pictures were? Anyway, it was sort of an interesting thing to do it. And plus, there was this enormous space to use, which was just exciting. OK, back to prints and rubbings and things. Um, this was um, a sort of an, a little useful thing about um, we're starting to do prints, and it was like architectural parts. And um, this is when I got into the QRs. This is something that, frankly, has not taken off, but I love it dearly. So I'll tell you more about that. This is my little basic part of the triumphal arts. This is about the size of the triumphal arch. So this is about nine, eight, nine feet high. And this is rubbings. This was all rubbings, even this stuff. I actually made these little plates. And then I had lots of little plates that I, you know, reoccur all over the place. And this was all a rubbing piece, which was, this really looked nice. This is a piece that mom and I did, sort of a segue. Um, it was at the art center. And I don't know, do you know the aquarium, the little, mirror, the little um, window that's behind the art center? Anyway, this is, you can do artwork in it. So we did this little piece with using the space in there. Um, anyway, then horrible, horrible 12, 9, 2012, December, Sandy Hook. I was teaching at that time. and. Um, elementary, and it just really uh, just devastated me to think of all those first graders getting lost. And so um, I thought, oh, finally, maybe they'll do something, right? And um, then, of course, um, nothing happened. And so I kept thinking, it's the elephant in the room, the guns, and so on. And so I got this idea to do this enormous elephant. This is 12 feet high. There's this enormous elephant, and on the elephant, it has guns. And of course, to do the guns, I would do rubbings with them, and so I had to make plates. I brought some in. We'll talk about that later. Um, but anyway, so this is actually an elephant, and it's rubbings. And if you look closely, there are actually guns all over to make the surface of the, of the texture on it. And some guns, my, my father, mom and, and my father would have talks about guns and said, well, you know, if you got away with the guns, then, you know, people wouldn't hurt. And, and then my father would look at mom, and he said, you don't need to have a fake gun. All you need to do is go like this, and you have a gun. Here's a gun. You don't need to have a toy gun. You've got one with you all the time. So anyway, so that was an elephant. And I put that, that was in the Slusser Gallery too. See, I'm always taking these big things. Now this was something that was part of the gallery project. Um, when they did off-site um, shows. And this also was sort of an anti-gun, anti-war thing. Only at that time, they were into drones. So this was sort of a drone. This is um, Command Central, um, where they, you operate the drones from. And then I made a whole bunch of little three-dimensional drones. And they were plastered all over it, uh, all over the space. And this was in Detroit someplace. And then it, that's so you can see the whole thing. Um, so all of these, and these were all rubbings. Right now, I'm not sure where they all are. I was going to bring one in, but I'm not sure where they are. These were TV you know, monitors, and then the brain going back into the distance. But this was Command Central, and then all the drones around it. Um, but these were all rubbings. These were all things that were rubbed and then made into the drones. Oh, the other fun thing about it was I was trying to think how I was going to carry them into Detroit. And so I, um, they all fold up flat. They all fold up flat, so you could put them in an envelope, a big envelope, and take them. All right, there's a little one on a sort of satellite guy. And then this whole thing actually ended up at the Slusser again. So 
And this was when I got the show with mom in the same room. See? There. There. Now, she had started doing this picture before, and then um, she added on to it so that the other part, because this was the burgers, the first of the burgers, and then she did the rest of the burgers on the top. All right, oh, and this was when it was coming down. But I thought it was such a great photograph. I'm showing it to you. <laughs> I thought, wow, that's really cool. I mean, something to think about for the future. Um, flags, um, this was another show that the gallery project did. Um, and this was called um, Unseen. And so this was a whole bunch of the flags I had done. And they were um, furled. They were furled. So you couldn't see what was in them. But they all had next to them was a little QR code, which then you could see what the flag looked like. Now, this is one I actually made for that show. And these, this is some kind of, of uh, fabric. Um, I think it was using for interfacing, uh, facing, strengthening when you do some. Anyway, this is all rubbings. So this was a flag that was rubbed. I don't think it would last through the winter, but you know, it was up. Now, these are the QR codes. You've seen those things, right, you readers? Anyway, so the idea is if you look at those things, then you could go to added value in your piece. And there are all sorts of fun things that you could do. So this was one of the things that you could then pull on these, and they would show what the flags look like open, which was fun. Next project for the gallery project I had was down in Toledo, and this was wish list. So these were my little characters, and they all had their little wishes. They had their little bubbles with their wishes. And these were mixed media, but a lot of it was rubbing. Most of this one was rubbing. All of this was rubbings. All of this little stuff down here. And same thing with this little person. So there's some people. And then this was another rubbing piece went on, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I didn't go into it. Calendars were sort of important. Um, I like calendars, so these were fun. This was a piece that had some rubbing QRs. This is when I was just retired, and I was trying to figure out what I was doing. And so I hadn't quite formed what I was doing. And so it was sort of all the stuff that's available. And so um, this was a, actually an art piece I started for my kids at school. But I loved it so much, I finished it off myself. Um, and it actually was, see these little things? These are actually, oh, here. These are actually little uh, books. It was really great. There was, the kids were supposed to draw a picture. Here, I'm going to go back. The kids were supposed to do a little animal, and then they were supposed to make a little story, and then the whole thing folds up and makes a book. And then they had a little pocket that they made to put the book into, which was sort of fun. I thought it was sort of a cute idea, but, you know. Anyway, so that was the stories. And then um, drawing, I always go back to drawing when I'm trying to figure things out. This was um, a origami rose. I don't know if you can see this. Um, it's one of the best origami roses I've ever seen, and I wanted to relearn how to do it. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make drawings of it so that I can remember how to make it. So I did a whole series of drawings, which were, I thought, nice drawings, too. Um, and this was figuring out a three-dimensional labyrinth. And then last summer, the last, what well, turned out to be the last of the alumna shows, anyway, I came up with um, the title for that one was, um, oh my goodness, what was it? Um, innuendos, ambiguities, um, some go other. Fish. Yeah, and then go fish at the end. So what I did is I made <laughs> this puppet, and then I did a rubbing of him, and then I put him into different positions. And it was the sort of like, you know, what is he? What can he become? So we're going to play with him in the workshop. Now we're getting into the workshop. And then these were all sort of photographs when I went to hang, put the thing up, just in the gallery here um, with the little character. And those were the actual pieces that were up. And in them was a little card. And I brought in two of them. So if any of you have any... If you have a reader for your QR code, you could try reading these and seeing what is in it, because um, these all went to different things about that piece. So it's sort of fun to see. And this was sort of more of the things that were in. By the way, everything recurs. Remember the little lady? That was like 40, no, what, 30 years ago or more? I see, more like 40, no, 30. Anyway. Um, and this was more of the things that were up on the web. All right, and this was the fish. 
And this was that part of the go fish. But you see, this is actually made out of the rubbing, the person. See this? This is the person bent into a shape. So I brought one in that you could play with if you wanted to try making fish. So here's all the little fish I came up with, which you could do. And then here's the little person holding the fish. And then there's a puppet. I think it's actually up on the web. So if you get the little card, the QR, and so on, then you could take this, you could print this out, you could cut it out, and make your own little mini person. All right, then that little figure got used in the next little idea that was sort of this winter, which had to do with something that mom and I had been playing with for a long time, is security envelope patterns. Do you know what I'm talking about? This is when you have a check or something, you open the letter, and inside there's this very nice little overall pattern. You've all seen them. They were put in there if you had money, you're not supposed to be able to see what's in the check, right? The thing is, they're called security patterns, okay? So I got playing, we got playing around. Well, I got caught on this. Mom did other things, but I got caught on. Well, what if you had an unsecurity pattern, all right? So <laughs> this sort of had going from heaven. So up here is clouds, rainbows, nice little things. And then it's starting to get down to things like snakes and people shooting at you and, God, and little things. This is an atomic bomb. So these are unsecure patterns. So this, then I did another piece this spring that had to do with taking the patterns I made up and having here are the unsecure patterns, all right? And then here are the people looking in to the, see these are outside the envelope. This is the, these are the normal security patterns. And these are the ones I came up with. And there is a QR code here, which means you could go online and I actually, oh, this is gives you a detail. Imagine opening the envelope and you have somebody shooting you. Um, Anyway, I made a whole bunch of sheets, so you could take this and print this out, and then you could actually cut it out. Um, here's another one. Here's another one. And then you cut it out, and then you just slip it in to the envelope. <laughs> so this is unsecure. You know, you'd have to send these to the proper people. On it. These are unsecure envelopes. Um, this was part of a show at the Swords and Plowshares um, Gallery in... Um, Detroit, and they were having a show this, this spring that had to do with um, guns, and it all sort of came up after the horrible Parkland thing on Valentine's Day, and that also really upset me a lot, and I thought, oh my, not the elephant. I kept saying, I can drag out the elephant again. I kept saying, you know, this is, nothing's been done, so on. But then, about a week or two weeks after Parkland, it was an amazing thing, and they still are, you know, they're still sort of working on it, is that the students, the, the people who were actually part of that whole dreadful circumstance were starting to go and march. They were active. They were being, going up and going to Washington. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. This deserves another elephant. Only this time, I'm not gonna do the adult elephant. The adult elephant didn't do anything. I'm gonna do a baby elephant. So I did put the ele other elephant I did put in, and actually, this is it at the Swords and Plowshares. Um, it actually, in a sense, looks better because it really does look like an elephant in the room because you see the ceiling almost touching it, so it really makes it things. But this is my little baby elephant. So the baby elephants, maybe the baby elephants will be able to get something done. If nothing, when they vote, they're gonna do a lot. And this is, oh, this is crayon rubbing. And I use the same guns. I was telling the staff here this afternoon, when I wanted to do this piece, um, I was going to drag out the guns that I used for rubbings for the big elephant. And so I still remember one day going and saying to my husband, I said, OK, Stan, you know, where did they put my guns? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my god. <laughs> so this is not, the guns are not me. But as I said, it, it was funny. All right, so um, that's my little talk about rubbings and so on. But we are going to go and play with this. And I did want to show you my little mentor about this. This is Max Ernst. Um, this is one of his pieces he did. And supposedly there's this myth story about when he invented it, but you know, quote unquote. Um, it's been around, but he really utilized it. He was in a, um, he traveled a lot. He was an early 20th century artist, and he was traveling a lot, and he was in a hotel room, and the floors had been washed quite a lot, and so the wood grain had started to show up. And he realized that he could put paper down on the wood floor, and he could do a rubbing. 
And that's where he started to do this whole series of pictures um, using different things. And this was, he was sort of a surrealist, and so things were a little bit strange on it. But this is the thing we're going to be doing, is we're going to be taking all sorts of strange objects, and we're going to be using some things that are identifiable, that are from the show on it, but we're also going, and you can make your own shapes too. That's another possibility. And we're going to be doing is making a little composition today. And to do this, I want to have you think about a couple of concepts, and we're going to go through them over here. One of them has to do with overlapping planes. When you do a rubbing, a lot of times people just do the rubbing of the whole shape, but you don't have to. And you also can only, you don't need to have the whole thing show. And if you play with sizes, then you can get depth and you can make things look a little bit like it's got some kind of illusion of depth. And you saw that in Max Ernst's little piece. See this? Big to small. And it makes it look like distance. Um, so that's one concept that we'll play with. And you can use this. This is just a facsimile of what you could do. If you do a little rubbing of something, here's a vase. That's just a circle. If you just do that, that's just a practice. That's a, collect a data point. But if you start to actually compose it into something, into a vase, and then if you add some shading into it, then it actually becomes a piece of, 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 of image to really deal with. So we are going to do is one big sheet that's sort of collecting data on interesting shapes. And then I want you to think about how you make a picture out of it. So in, in lieu of that, there also is positive negative. You're going to be, have a possibility to cut out some things, you know, either the ones I made, or you can make your own. It's up to you. But I want you to think about positive, negative. You don't always have to have just use the positive. You can actually save the pieces that you cut out if you do it properly, and you can use those for your designs too. Um, and I made some design sheets. These are images from mom's artwork, and you could cut these out. The trick on it is, and I hope I did this properly, if this one you just cut out around the outside. This is one of her little bomb figures. That's why it's not whole you know, car bombs. Um, these are chairs. Um, and this is the spatula. If you got a chance to see her wonderful video, this is the spatula. Um, but the idea is that these have holes. So if you cut along the black lines and don't cut anywhere where there isn't black lines, you will get something that's very fragile, but you still can rub it. These will be holes because they'll drop out. But these will stay, even though they're cut there. And so you'll be able to have a shape that you can rub very nicely. The little lines that you cut, these little lines here, hardly show at all when you do a rubbing. So as I said, they're a possibility. And this gets into symmetry, which means that you can double things. So these are um, objects. This is a little cardinal. Mom right now is actually in the process of making another piece of artwork. She is <laughs> right. <laughs> As I said, she's been working on it for the last two weeks. Anyway, it has to do with cardinals. And it's this little three-dimensional cardinal that, here, there we go, on it. And it was something that she saw in a book, but now she's implementing it like this. So you could actually make a cardinal if you want to, and I'll show you how to do the little thing in between. Um, but you need to have symmetry. This is only one half. So if you cut this out, and then you rub it, and then you line it up along here, flipped, that's the positive negative, you can get the whole bird. And then I actually used um, one of the little bridge things for making the wings. And then this is a little cake. So if you saw the cakes on her birthday cake, a birthday party piece, you could actually use those um, to make two. The reason that this is dotted is that, you know how you do things where you slot? So you have to make one of these with a the slot down below. Then you'd rub it, and then you'd make another piece that would have the slot up above. And then if you cut them both out, you should be able to put them together, and it will stand, okay? And then um, this is a bridge, same thing. If you cut along the black lines, <laughs> you'll get rid of these spaces, and you'll have something you can rub. So anyway, let us go and see um, what we can do over in the rubbing thing. I want to show you where the the materials are, and um, I'm going to give a little demonstration, and then I'm going to let you go play. So, have you got any questions? Oh.